For today's adventure, we're traveling to the Okavango Delta in Botswana, Africa. It's known for its sprawling grassy plains and seasonal flooding. This massive flooding creates a unique ecosystem, which is reflected in its extraordinary biodiversity. Elephants, hippos, birds, lions, zebras, and of course, Nile crocodiles. And Chris has traveled all the way here with the hopes of photographing and swimming with these apex predators. But swimming with the crocodilian species that's responsible for the most human deaths in the world is not exactly safe. So it's day three and so far we've had two days of diving, but no big crocs. We're hoping today is the day, third time's a charm, you know, um, that, that's what we're hoping for. But we have found clear water, we just haven't found clear water and adult crocs. Although yesterday, we were pretty close. We found an adult croc that was in clear water and uh, it just dipped out, you know. So we don't, we couldn't find it, we were trying to track it. Um, so hopefully we're gonna go to the same spot today and we're gonna maybe stake him out, see what we can do, uh, try to come up with a different plan. I mean, these animals are very smart, you know, they don't really want us anywhere near them, so it's been hard to try to track them and get up on them. And the water situation is not ideal. Um, it's just, a lot of it's very murky, you know? And so on uh, our last trip, we had nothing. It was all coffee water. And on this trip, we at least have some clear spots. So there is a pretty good chance. And we're, I mean, we're gonna make it happen. Like we're gonna be out there and we have been all day, every day so far, just out there up and down these channels, trying to find a croc in clear water. So it is very challenging, but we're, we're doing our best. We're gonna, we're gonna make it happen. So we're just cruising around right now. We've been out all day trying to find a croc that is diveable. So we're just scanning up here. There's a, a nice patch of grass up there that we're just eyeing. It's got a lot of ducks on it, but no croc. We've seen a lot of evidence where the crocodiles have been laying out. You see the grass is flattened out. Just, it's just no luck in a clear area. That's, that's the trick, right? We've seen tons of crocs in the murky spots, but there's nothing clear. So all we can do is just keep trying. Finding an area with clear water has been the goal the entire time. So when we found this little gem of a spot, we decided to hop in and explore and see what we could find. This little corner of the Delta had by far the nicest water we've seen so far on either trip I've been here. It was absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. It looked like it was spring fed. Unfortunately though, we weren't able to really find any big crocs in here, but what we did find was a really cool little baby crocodile. So it was our first time being able to actually get in the water with a croc, even though it was a baby, but hey, you gotta start somewhere, right? You see that toothy little grin sticking out of the bushes right there? So that's this small crocodile that was sitting up on the edge of the papyrus here. Now you can hear that rapid clicking sound. That is my DSLR camera going off. And then I'm also tilting up and down the camera angle because I'm shooting with the GoPro and then also shooting with the DSLR and the GoPro is mounted on top of the dome for that. I then come around the backside of the root system and here we can see the crocodile's tail just drifting off of the edge of the root system right there. And as you follow it up, you can see his, his little feet, his little body. I mean, what a perfect little creature. This one is probably about, I would say about two to three years old maybe. And uh, just look at that beautiful coloration and pattern on this guy. Such a cool, cool animal. The little croc then noticed our presence and then blasted off into the water to try to take some refuge. So I was able to follow it and try to get some cool shots and videos. Now you can see my camera flash going off right there. That's the DSLR and uh, running video at the same time. Eventually the croc decided to just kind of slowly settle down into the vegetation on the bottom though. After seeing all the big adult crocodiles up on the banks of the river, it's so cool to see this little tiny miniature version of a grown up. Now, while my friend Walter and I were photographing the croc, it turned around and swam right towards me and I could not resist the opportunity to try to handle this little beauty a little bit. So you can see right there, I just very, very gently under the chin redirected, support the body, and then very gently move the animal the exact same way that I move alligators. It's the exact same handling techniques that I use. 
Basically, the idea here is be the tree. Try to move slowly, support the animal in a non-threatening way, and it just kind of perceives you as part of the environment, more or less. I mean, it's not dumb. It knows it's me. But the more you try to move, kind of like you are part of the environment, the less threatening it will perceive you as. It's really, really cool and just really awesome how cool and chill this little crocodile was. That little clear water spot was absolutely amazing. What a gorgeous location, but unfortunately only home to a few baby crocodiles. So we get back up on the water and continue our search for a larger crocodile in water that is clear enough to dive. In this drone footage, you can see on the left side, relatively clear water, and on the right side, that very, very silty, murky water flowing in. So this is what we're dealing with here. It's been extremely difficult to find water that is clear enough for us to be able to dive. All right, guys, so we just came around the other side of the island with the ducks we were just talking about, and then there's a croc. And it's up on the surface, it's swimming away, but it's in the right area, it's relatively clear, and uh, we're gonna hop in and see if we can get this guy. It's a pretty big croc too, and uh, he's right out there. You see the water quality is pretty good, it's pretty clear, and he's out there. So we're gonna try to get him. You can see that what we qualify as good visibility is very relative out here and this area is well it's 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 one of the better spots that we've had so far but as you can see it's definitely still very murky and very creepy and you can just imagine a big croc lurking anywhere out there in the silt The visibility also comes and goes as you move down the river. Some areas look pretty good, some worse. And then we also get up into these papyrus caves, as you can see right here. So this is underneath the root structure of the papyrus. And we went creeping in there with lights to make sure there's nothing hiding up underneath. These caves are extremely dangerous. It's a really tight space. And if a croc does lunge at you, you basically have nowhere to go. So we are exploring these with extreme caution. After hours and days of searching, we finally find a little light sandy patch and we get our first decent sized crocodile. This one is still relatively small as far as Nile crocodiles go. I estimate it to be around maybe six to seven feet but it's the biggest croc we've had in the water so far and we're still very, very happy and excited for this encounter. As the croc turns around, you can see it actually has a piece of fish stuck in the mouth. And upon further look, when it was turning around, I was able to see it's actually the pectoral barb of this catfish that is jammed into the crocodile's mouth. And so that's like really stuck in there, man. This guy needs to floss. We spend a few hours hanging out with this crocodile and it comes up to the surface to grab a breath. You can see him floating up at the top there. And it seems relatively calm for the time being, but that calmness does not last. The croc makes a quick and sudden snap back at the camera and actually bites onto my dome port for a second right there. You see bubbles coming out as it's hissing underwater, uh, but then it calms down again and starts to creep away a little bit. Uh, this one definitely likes his personal space. This croc is relatively calm for a Nile crocodile. It's a pretty mild manner for the most part, but it does take a few opportunities to uh, snap back, as you can see right there, and remind us it's still a crocodile. 
we take a few more photos and videos of the crocodile and then let him go off on his way back into the delta. This trip took a massive amount of time and effort in the water to finally yield some results, but man, I am so excited that we finally got some shots of a crocodile in the wild, in the delta, underwater. It's been a dream of mine to be able to dive with a Nile crocodile in the wild, and to finally actualize that dream has been amazing. Now, it wasn't the 12 to 15 foot Nile crocodile I was hoping we would find, but I was still really excited to find our relatively small six or seven foot crocodile here and spend some time with him. And as you can see, he was really happy to see us too. And making this trip possible, I cannot thank my good friend Jeff Schmidt enough. He's the one that really made this all come together. Thank you so much, Jeff, and I'm hoping we can get back out there again next year. And next year, we're going to find that 15-footer and get in the water with him. And thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, let us know what you think. And I hope you enjoy some of these photographs I took of the Nile crocodiles.